Namaste. Welcome to my heart, to our Sangha, to the day, the time that we celebrate the return to this, this moment, the return to Krishna consciousness, to Christ consciousness, to balanced self-awareness, to the consciousness at the sun center. Once upon a time, in the ever-present now, deep, deep, deep in the high Himalayan forests, there lived a small group of sacred beings, and they were led by this absolutely wonderful, glowing being that you might call a monkey. Its hair was gold and stuck out in all directions. It had long, beautiful, elegant fingers and nails. And shining from that gold hair was an ebony face as radiant as you can imagine. And from within that ebony face shone the most beautiful eyes you've ever seen, the eyes of God. You looked into these eyes and the stars and the universes were there. Time, time, time immemorial was there. All of the universes, when you looked into those eyes, were there and were full. When you were blessed by the presence of this look, the stillness settled upon your being. For every day, from morning till night, this Lord Divine, the Golden One they called him, they called her, they called it the Golden One, meditated, turned inward. And all of the clan gathered round and they meditated. And all of the sounds fell away and all the noise fell away and all of the chaos fell away and there was only silence. One day, a king came into the forest for he had heard about the golden one he had heard that the Golden One was the greatest of all beings upon the earth. And it kind of hurt his ego a little bit because he thought he was the greatest of all beings upon the earth. They made a lot of noise when they entered that forest. They were pounding their feet, pounding their feet walking through the forest. The golden one opened one eye and went back to meditating. Open the other eye. Well, I guess they're not gonna go away. I should open both eyes. And as he did, open both eyes and smiled upon him. His face was radiant. The entire forest lit with the beauty of his face. The light shining forth from his eyes filled the entire forest. 
and the king and his men were overcome. They were overcome. What is this? What is this? Stepping back, they approached very, very gingerly. And the king was moved to do something he hadn't done for many, 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 many years. Why he put his hands together and he said, Namaste. Are you the golden one they speak of? Not a word was uttered. The light shines. The light radiated forth from the golden one through the tips of his golden hair, through the tips of her golden hair. Her face was radiant with light, but her eyes contained all the universe, the knowing in all the universe. The golden one looked at the king and said, how can I help you? You came a long way. How can I help you? And the king was confused because he didn't expect that. Very seldom did people come and say, how can I help you? They always came and said, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. And he said, to his great surprise, I would like what you have. I would like the light that you have. The golden one reached over, put his thumb in the water, and leaned over to the king and said, You have what I have. Anything that I can do, you can do. The only difference between us, we have come here where it is quiet. We have come here and we spend our time devoted. We have chosen, us, my clan and I, to spend our time devoted to that which we seek, devoted to our own progress on the spiritual path. You, my friend, you're down among all the people. You're spending all your time trying to fix them, trying to solve their problems, trying to get them to do what you think they should do. Every day I see you. In my mind's eye, I see you, you get up in the morning and from the moment you wake up, somebody is asking you for something. You're doing, 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 doing. But you're not paying attention, sir. You're not paying attention to where this is going to lead you along the path to your spiritual enlightenment. And the king sat down next to the golden one and began to sob, poured his heart out, all of the burdens that he was carrying. And the golden one looked and smiled and listened. Well, sir, when he finished, the golden one said, now what are you going to do? Now what? And the king did what you would expect him to do. He said, well, I'm wondering if I can stay here with you. 
Can I stay and just meditate with you? Can I become part of your clan? Ah, I wish it were so. I wish it were so, but unfortunately you have dharma, you have duty. You have worked your way very hard to become king. Now you could begin to work your way to become a meditator, a mystic, but always and only as you're doing your duty. It doesn't seem fair. King cried, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm tired of that. Look at all this. Look at where it's led me. I don't want to do it anymore. I want to leave. I'm sorry. Leaving has consequences too. And leaving will not leave you to this path. And so the golden one took the king to a place that we'll go to later this morning. And he said, now look, as you and I will look this morning to see how to walk more slowly, more carefully, with ever greater wisdom to that place that we wish to go to. And so today, around the world, people are celebrating the holiday of Easter. Next week, uh, people will celebrate Greek Orthodox Easter. Ramadan is still being honored. Passover is being honored. Yesterday was Hanuman Jayanti in India, the day to honor Lord Hanuman. Why is this full moon in the spring important? It is a sacred time in which we remember that which we are. We turn and remember this at your Ajna Chakra, this at your Sun Center. This is balanced self-conscious awareness. It is the place, the state of consciousness, not the place, the state of consciousness which you and I were walking towards in meditation, and in all of the strivings in the daily life, this is the goal. Happiness, contentment, being able to live in peace and equanimity and joy, but with ever greater wisdom. No longer trying to control others, but looking at our own lives and saying, what have I been devoted to? What am I doing with my life? Not in a judgmental way, but in a way that says, huh. And you ask yourself the question. So get ready. I'm going to ask you the question now. Close your eyes, if you will. If you could take one thing with you to your next life, what would that be? Capture the thought and hold it. Don't let it go. Now ask yourself, in all of the getting, in all of the doing in your life, what are you doing to bring that you wish to take to your next life? 
What are you doing to feed it, to vivify it, so that you will take it to your next lifetime? What are you doing with every breath that you breathe to do that? The golden one shines. The infinity of universes lives within the eyes, the mind of the golden one. What is the golden one? Who is the golden one? Who is the golden one? The golden one is in the form that we call a monkey. The golden one is that which exists within you, which lives within you. The infinity of the universes lives within you, is within you. The light of life shines within you. You have only to remove the clouds and the veils and the wanting, the raving, the grasping, the yearning, and just be still. The answer to your question, the answer to your search for happiness, it lies within. Now, one of my very beautiful disciples left me a message and they said, oh, I made a mistake. I made some boo-boos today. I wasn't where I was supposed to be on time. I made some boo-boos. Yeah, you know, I said, well, Mentally, I said, it's all right. It's all right. I make boo-boos every day. We all do. We all make errors. Errors in timing, errors in the words that we say, errors in the actions that we take. But perhaps the greatest of these that needs to be paid attention to It's the error of trying to control another person's life. The error of trying to fix them. Turn inward instead and pay attention to yourself, to the emotions that rise and fall in your own mind, to your actions, to how you're spending your life. And let go, let go, let go, let go of that self criticism. Let go of that feeling of unworthiness. You must, at some time, you must let go of that. The feeling of the, um, that you're not worthy, the feeling that you need to have others approval. You simply must let go of it in time. And why not make now the time? Why not make now the moment that you say it's okay? I'm finished, fini, no more. And if another moment in time comes up where you feel unworthy, where you feel that you need another person's approval, let it go again and again and again and again until the habit of the mind settles down and the light begins to shine ever more brightly within you. The light that you are, the veils strip away and the light that you are shines forth and radiates forth. So today, the question to ask yourself, you said this is what you wish to take with you in your life. What are you devoted to? What is so important to you that you are devoting every day of your life to it? What is your Kriya, that which vivifies you and strengthens you? Some of you have chosen 
to devote your life to being a mother. And this is one of the greatest pieces of karma. I think one of the most difficult pieces of karma for it truly teaches one what better way to learn to let go. You bring a child, a soul into the earth. You allow a soul to incarnate into the earth. Whether you are mothering them through adoption, you're mothering them through giving birth to them. And for the next 20 or 25 years, you are devoted to one thing. Giving them all the skills they need, all the help they need, so they can perform the great yoga asan and stand on their own two feet. Some of you are working as therapists and you are performing great service to help those that you are helping to perform the greatest of yoga asans, to stand on their own two feet. To stand, not wobble. My guru always says, don't wobble. Stand. Stand firmly on your own two feet. Know when it's time to ask for help. And remember this. Remember this. This is the most important of the mystical truths. You are a hum. Amasmi, you are the creator of your life. And thus, you must turn to the divine. You must turn to ask for help. And once you turn, the divine will come, the golden ones will come, the Lord of life will come in all of his names, its forms, and bless you. Jesus will bless you with his love. Allah will bless you with his compassion. Krishna will bless you with his loving compassion. Hanumanji will bless you with his wisdom. Whatever the form of the divine is that you attune to will bless you. But you, you must turn. In spite of what all the religions say, God does not come down and say, Hey, 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 Swamiji, Swamiji. Sometimes the lineage comes down and says, you know, Swami G. Sometimes my guru comes down and says, Swami G, you know, let me hit you with the mallet to wake you up, to turn, right? Now, but you, you have the power and the capacity to turn. To turn towards the goodness, to turn towards the light, to turn towards the help. So what is it that you are devoting your life to? And as we move into this meditation, I'm going to say to you, allow yourself to see the truth. You may say, well, here's what I'm devoting my life to. Here's what's important. I want to take this to my next life. You know, it's like the person who says I want to learn Japanese and they never pick up a book. They never pick up a book. Person who wants to learn to be rich and they never study anything at all. They don't even know what the word means. You must learn all of those things that will support you in your effort for the rest of your life and into your next incarnation. For what you are doing today and now, you will carry with you. You will carry with you on the road. You will carry with you to the next incarnation. Just like everything that you have here in this life, you earned and you brought with you. And so let us turn inward. And we will share a time of meditation, lifting Lifting, lifting, lifting. 
remembering always the symbol of the golden one, the monkey form that was filled with light and the continual memory of all the universes. It's a symbol of your mind. It's a symbol of consciousness that has been brought into balance. It's a symbol of the totality of all conscious awareness. Not this little thing, right? What is it? The thumb? Not the thumb that can block out the sun. Savitur Maranyam. Savitur. See the sun that you are. And now let us go and meditate together and ascend and ascend upwards and receive the blessings of the divine and see that which needs to be done. Namaste. Focusing your attention at the sun center. Sit with your spine erect. Place your hands in the Om Mudra on your thighs with the index finger and the thumb brought together. The hands pointed towards the spine. Turning your head to the left, exhale twice. Bring your head forward and begin to watch your breath. Inhaling through the nostrils and exhaling through the nostrils. Use the sipping breath now, sipping through the mouth as if through a straw. Draw the energy from the limbs to the trunk. From the trunk to the spinal column. From the base of the spine to the sun center. Move the energy as a golden ball of light out in front of you. Sweep around to the left, behind you, to the right, encasing your entire being in golden light. Do this three times. And now begin to ascend upward. Moving your awareness above the room, the building, the continent, as high as you are able into the high place. When you have gone as high as you are able, rest a moment. And now ascend a little further, 
until you reach a grove, a grove of meditation. Enter the grove and find your meditation place. Feel the grove fill with light. In your mind's eye, you see revealed to you a mirror, a clear mirror. Within that mirror, you see appear images that show you your devotion, what you are devoted to, how you have been devoting your life. You simply watch the images as they appear. Take all of these images, see them come together in the mirror, in a circle. And as you watch, they draw closer and closer and closer. till they are blurred and you just see a simple dot, a little circle, a tiny dot of bindu. The mirror dissolves away and the bindu remains in front of you. The flame of Kriya appears in your meditation place, a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant light, the light of Kriya shines forth in your sun center, mirroring the light that you see in front of you.
And now the bindu. Take the bindu of all of your devotion. All of your devotion. And offer it to the flame of Kriya. Feel the brilliant colors radiate forth. As you watch the flame of Kriya, feel the flame within you, the light within you, the light of your devotion. Within the flame of Kriya, you see the Om. Within your light at your sun center, you see the Om. A flame in the Om. Reach out to touch each other. Inhale and feel the Om from the flame of Kriya come to your sun center. The light of Kriya touches your light, bringing its radiance into your entire being. They are the same. The wave in the ocean, the Upa flame and the Maha flame, they are the same. Thou art that. Feed the flame within you through your devotion, your practice, your repeated focus on one ideal. Feed that flame. Let the veils be removed and the light shine forth. Let the veils be removed and the light shine. Thou art full. Thou art radiant. You have all that you need at this moment. At this moment, you can see clearly. The strength of your devotion, where you have been placing your energies. And perhaps in reflection, you will see what needs to be changed to more efficiently reach your goal. Oh. 
Become like the golden one. Interfere not in the dreams of another. But pay attention with ever greater diligence to your own path, your own dreams. For it is each of us that must stand for ourselves. It is each of us, each of us alone, that must turn to the divine for help, for assistance. The powers that be will help you. They are helping you. They are blessing you at this moment. Open your heart and your mind to receive Om Ganga Pataye Namaha Om Gum Guru Bhyo Namaha Saraswataye Namaha Paramanandam Paramasukadam Kevalam Yanamurti Bhavadi Dan Triguna Rahitam Sadgurum Tam Namame Chaitanyam Shasvatam Shantam Nirakalam Nirandalam Nara Bindu Kalatitam Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Dhyana Mulam Guru Murti Pucha Mulam Guru Padam Mantra Mulam Guru Vakyam Moksha Mulam Guru Kripa Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwara Guru Sachat Parabrahma Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Dhyana Mulam Guru Muti, Pucha Mulam Guru Padam, Mantra Mulam Guru Vakyam, Moksha Mulam Guru Kripa, Om Namah Shivaya Gurave, Satchitananda Murtaye, Nishprapandraya Shantaya, Niralambaya teaches say, Om Gum Guru Bhyo Namaha, Om Gum Guru Bhyo Namaha, Om Gum Guru Bhyo Namaha. At this moment, feel the golden dewdrops of Ananda pouring forth upon your crown center. Feel your goodness be filled with the light. Ananda, 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 Ananda.
Namaste. When you are ready, continue your meditation and return to the room. I thank you as always for your blessings, the blessings of your presence, your kindness, your yoga city. Remember the light that thou art and share that with all who enter your aura. Namaste.